Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Today we're going to talk about palette knives. So all this week we are just kind of getting the basics of what you need and how you can begin painting and doing things um, creatively, sort of the way that I do them. Not necessarily to, to copy exactly what I do, but just to give you some inspiration and some ideas. So yesterday, there's a live video that's saved over on my Facebook page from yesterday. We talked about different supplies. That's the question that I get the most, I think, is um, what kinds of paint do I need to buy? What Do I need to buy brushes? Do I need to buy several different kinds of palette knives? What do I need? So we talked about that yesterday, and that video is saved over on my Facebook page. You can go and watch that anytime you want to. And today, we're going to continue our series, and we're going to talk about palette knives. Tomorrow, I plan to talk about adding collage elements to your artwork or mixed media tips. We're also going to talk about different kinds of paint. I'm going to do some demonstrations for you today, tomorrow, Thursday, and then on Friday, we'll just paint something together. So today, we're going to talk about palette knives, and we're going to look at some things that I've already painted and use the palette knife on to show you the techniques that you can do with the palette knives. And we're also going to, I'm going to work on this a little bit more today, and I'm going to move my camera over my table so that you can see what I'm doing with a little more of a, a close-up shot. But as you're coming on here, on here today, <clears throat> I may have to have some water. Say hello. Let me know that you're watching. And if you have questions about anything that we're talking about, anything that I show you, then I'll be happy to answer those questions for you here in the comments. So I'm going to turn my camera around and hopefully not make anybody dizzy. So just hang on just a second. You're going to get a little, <laughs> you're going to get a little view of my space here as I do this. I'll try to do it a little slowly so that we don't get all crazy feeling. Okay. All right, let me turn my light this direction and maybe move this up a little bit. Hi, Terry. Okay. This is, I've just got several examples here in my, my mixed media book. I'm still not 100% sure that I've got this set up good. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is show you the knives that I use most often. Yesterday, I showed you this one, and... It's covered in paint right now, but it has the pointed tip on it. And I use this knife in just about every single painting that I paint. So that's my most, my most favorite. <laughs> that's the best one. Then I've also got this one that's similar to that one, but it has more of a rounded tip on it. I use that one sometimes. I was using this one a lot yesterday, which is very similar to this one, but it's shorter and smaller. Maybe I should move over here. It's smaller and it makes it easier to paint smaller things. And then this one is the one that I use to take paint out of containers or take, like I have this giant container of white paint and I just kind of use it to scoop it out you can use something like this to really spread if you have a large area that you're working with. But um, most of the time, my paintings get done with this knife right here. Okay, there are lots and lots of different kinds like I was showing you yesterday. There are also these that are really weird. You can just make all kinds of cool textures with this. So just imagine if you were painting a flower and using this um, for some texture, even with the greenery, because it's going to, I'll show you in a minute what it does when you use it. Then there's also this one. I've used this one some, but not a whole lot. 
move this over. And then these are just really a bigger version of this, not anything special. These can make some cool effects. These are some more. These all came in one pack that were all just really interesting looking that I thought I wanted to try and see what I could do with them. The one knife that I almost never use is this. It's just awkward for me. I don't know. Some people may be able to make it do what you want it to do, but this one is not my favorite. I don't know. I guess one thing you could do with it is make some some lines that are horizontal like this. I don't know, but I just don't like it too much. Okay, so let's take these away. These are the ones that I use the most. Hi Marlena. Okay. This is a painting that we did um, several months ago in the creative community when we were doing landscapes and I wanted to show this one to you because it's done completely with palette knife and I'm pretty sure I used this one to do the whole thing. Um, but one of the effects that you can get from this is scraping into your paint so if you can see there are scrapes in that sky there that were done with the knife so in addition to laying the paint down you can also use it to take the paint off so you may want to scrape in some details or this is fun to do a lot of times when you're doing a floral arrangement and you have maybe put down some green paint and then you just take the end of your your knife and scrape into it and it makes little wispy areas all in there so that's that's a fun thing that you can do and that's one of the techniques that you can accomplish with a palette knife okay then another thing another reason why i really like this one that has the the tip on it like this is you can make these small little round effects like these little berries that I did. So to do those I just would put a little bit of, of paint on the end of my knife and make little circles. If you're trying to use something like this it would be impossible. Um, you can't really use one of these bigger knives and make those small little details. So that's that's one of the great things about using this knife here that has the little small tip on it. You can make all these little round spots also little details like just inside here i can use this almost like um not really a pencil but uh, a, a more of a detail maker if that makes sense okay i was also going to show you this here so i use this knife once again and the fur on this guy is somewhat blended, but it's still layered. So that is one of the great things about using knives. If I were to try to use a brush to create this kind of look, it would be really, really hard because what I've done is put down something dark. And then, like I said yesterday, the acrylic paint dries really quickly. And so then I'm able to come back over it with some light paint and it blends just a little bit, just enough that it gives it that effect, which I really love. Okay, what else was I going to show you? Before I do a little demonstration. There's another one in here. That was a floral. I was thinking I was going to show you something. But now I can't. There it is. Okay, so this month we are doing florals in the creative community. And using your knife is going to help you to create these kinds of areas like this that are really soft. Um, almost like it's pushed back because 
you can can just really lightly put in a little bit of color here and there like this here and you can also use it to make really bold strokes and colors that that come forward so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on a painting that is kind of in the middle and I'm almost done with it but I'll just bring it over here and hopefully get it lined up so you can see what I'm doing here I'll just kind of show you what how I use this so let me get my light pulled over just a little bit more <clears throat> and you guys if you have questions about palette knives while I'm doing this working on this then now will be a great time for you to type your questions and I'll come back and answer those whenever I am able Okay, so I started on this one yesterday. Let's see, this is how I just take out some paint, put it on my palette here. Most of my paint is going to come out of a tube, but I use a lot of white paint, so I bought a big container of it. Um, what I want to do is kind of go around some of these areas here. And I've just got to add some more details in here. And so this is the knife that I definitely want to use to add those details. And that's because the tip of it is, is made for details, really. I really like. Also, to clean these things, you don't have to use any kind of solvent or anything you can just scrape this stuff right off if you have a razor blade a flat one you could scrape it and it makes it even easier <clears throat> so I'm just going to use my knife come in here add some depth And a lot of times I paint over things and then I come back and fix what I painted over or repaint. There's just lots and lots of layers involved in the way the way that I do things. So I know that I've painted over some of these leaves here. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's okay. And blending with your knife is something that you can do. Also, I just don't usually, I don't do a lot of blending because I like the layered look more than anything. So see the tip of this knife lets me get in here and add some little dark areas where I think I need them. And I'm going to show you in just a minute. I'm going to get my, I'm going to get, um, I can't talk and do this at the same time. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm going to get out my sketchbook in just a minute and show you some of the different things that you can do, the different effects that you can get with different knives.
doesn't really take a whole lot either just a little tap or a, just a little bit of paint can really go a long way okay so that gave you a little example I can see with something else I need to do gave you a little example of what it's like to use the knife to put in some details with this one that has the really pointy tip on it which I really like it's my favorite okay I'm gonna put this away and I'm gonna show you here in my sketchbook what kinds of things you can do with your knife okay that's some examples of what we're going to be doing in the creative community this month with different leaves and berries and things like that but okay so this knife here the one that I use most often is good for just just about anything so you can spread paint in large areas with it you can also use the side of it and make texture make lines um, which would be good for making like stems in your floral arrangements or whatever something like that and so this one is my favorite this is the one that I also use to make the small details just like that and notice that I'm not holding it really tightly I'm just holding it really loosely that's something that you just have to get used to okay let's move to a different one so this is the one that I was using mostly to create the painting that I was just working on and showing you and it's about it's about the same it's just smaller so it doesn't have quite the same sharp tip on it but if I'm trying to make a really small like a really small flower or something then I'm gonna want to use a smaller a smaller knife shorter in this length is, is easier to make smaller things so I can do it with this but all this back here is just kind of like extra baggage that I don't need so this one with the smaller and shorter length is easier to make little small things okay then this one here is good for making anything that you want to have like a rounded edge on so if you were making a flower or something like this then this one would be easier for that purpose it's going to be hard to make like you can't really make a straight line with this very easily I mean you can do it but it's not anything like trying to use that other one I guess it would work well for any kind of texture that you're trying to do that has sort of a rounded edge on it so this one this one could be helpful with flowers okay this one is the one that I said I never use it's just really awkward for me I don't I just don't like it at all it might be good if you're trying to do maybe if you're trying to do some lines like this I don't know it's just not my favorite okay and then we have this little guy who's very interesting so when I use it this is this is what you're gonna get so you could you could definitely make textured bushes or 
See what happens when we drag it. It's just going to give you a totally different idea. You could even stamp it. It almost looks like a frog's foot to me, though, when you stamp it. But it could make some really neat effects if you if you played with it enough that you knew what it was going to do. I hardly ever use this one either. All these fancy ones that have all these neat designs, they could be used for all kinds of things, I'm sure. I just don't usually take the time to try to figure out how can I use this to make something that looks cool. Because I, I just usually pick up my trusty knife and use this one. So I'm not even 100% sure what I would use this for unless I'm doing something abstract and I want to be able to do geometric looking effects like that, which could be really cool also. And then I wanted to show you all these plastic knives because these are the ones that you can get really inexpensively. They come in all of the like assorted brush kits, but they're kind of hard to use because they're so flimsy. And they're also just just hard to hold because this the way the plastic is, it's not the same as holding this larger piece that is made of wood and so if you're using a plastic knife and you get frustrated just know that it's not you it's the knife so getting something that is a better quality like this with a wider handle that you can hold um, it's going to help you a lot see these these handles are just easier easier to hold and easier to maneuver than these little plastic ones with all these ridges that are hard to to hold on to. So there are lots of different things that you can do with knives. <clears throat> you can the flowers of course are my main thing that I like to do but um, adding texture, adding color, adding just unique ideas just really make they make knives so much fun for me anyway and I know this may not be for everybody so if you're interested in it though then I will be happy to answer any questions that you have okay I'm gonna look and see if any of you have any questions uh, Catherine said, am I using acrylic or oil? I'm using acrylic, but I'm using a heavy bodied acrylic paint. Uh, Nancy says, where did I get those palette knives? She needs the one with a rounded edge for flower petals. They all look better than what she has. If you, um, let me see, let me grab this link real quick. I have a list of all of my favorite things over on my blog and I'm going to grab the link and put it here for you so you can find those palette knives. I'm pretty sure that I ordered them from Amazon but I'm not a hundred percent so I'm going to grab this link for you first and we'll put that in here you can go over to my website through that link and there's up at the, the very top the palettes have that set has the rounded one in it and then also the ones that are all funky and weird like this I've also got a link to that set of knives too so you can find all of those links over on my website you're welcome Okay, so I've showed you what my favorite knife is, and 
We worked on this one just a little bit earlier, putting in some, let me get my camera to focus again for me, putting in some of these darker areas down here. What's ticking like that? Hang on. Sorry about that. When I move things around, my camera doesn't like it sometimes. So I'm going to work on this a little bit more. And if you guys have questions about palette knives, of course, I go in depth with instructions and lots and lots of help in my creative community. That's the purpose of that community is teaching. So this was just sort of like an introduction. I know that there are a lot of people who are interested in this this type of technique but are a little bit intimidated by what they need to purchase. So I thought this would be a good time to just give you an idea of, of what you might want to buy, what these different things do, how these different knives work, and how I use them. So hopefully this was helpful in some way. Thank you, Sherry. So I'm going to add a little bit of some bright yellow in a few spots. And I've got to go back over some of these areas where I kind of messed up my green. I have my leaves coming down and then I went in and put in this line of brown. So I'm going to need to go back over that just a little bit. And those of you who are interested, my creative community is open right now. We're going to be open through Monday which is May the 11th. So if you're interested in joining us, you can do that. You can do that now. I'll put a link in the description for you if you'd like to join us. And just like with brushes, there are going to be some techniques that when you do those techniques with your palette knife, it may turn out a little bit different than it, it may look when I do it, which makes it a, a really good thing because we don't want to, to ever take away from your own special abilities and how how things work best for you because that's what makes yours whatever it is that you're creating very unique and original and that's one of the things that I really like to stress in my my group is stay original and if you aren't doing original work now meaning you're not using your own ideas and trying different things and making things look very different and unique to you, then I encourage, encourage you to try to get started and just allow your own ideas to flow and come out and see what happens because everybody has a little bit of something different that they can offer and that they can can add to their artwork and make it really unique and special. And I really want to encourage my students to do that. All right. 
You're welcome, Nancy. Hi, Gina. So I gave you a little demo with the palette knife and different kind of palette knives. And if you're just joining, you can go back and watch the replay and see what all those different knives can do. I'm sure that you can come up with all kinds of things that, that they can do. I know just seeing, just watching me make some marks with the knife will probably spark some ideas. And that's usually what happens. That's usually what happens to me. Like if I'm watching something on YouTube and I'm watching someone else paint, just seeing when they place a certain color beside another color or a certain stroke that they may make, it helps to to give me ideas for how I can can use that information and turn it into something that is unique to me in the way that I paint. So a lot of times I, I may get frustrated because I can't paint something that looks super hyper realistic, but then I need to remember that this is this is me. This is how I create things. And you may be the same way. If you're getting frustrated with the way something's turning out when you're trying to paint just like someone else, it may be that you're holding yourself back and you're not allowing yourself to do what only you can do. So just keep that in mind. All right, I will see you guys again tomorrow here at noon and we will talk about mixed media. So hope you can join me back tomorrow at noon and I will see you guys then. Bye.